so we presented the DECLARE TIMI 58 trial here at the American Heart Association meeting. Uh, the background on this study is that uh, patients who have diabetes are at high risk for cardiovascular events, uh, particularly heart failure, uh, also at high risk for uh, renal complications. And so uh, we designed uh, this trial to test the safety and efficacy of a, a diabetes medication, a drug called dapagliflozin, which is an SGLT2 inhibitor. Uh, in, the, uh, in patients who have diabetes who either already have cardiovascular disease or who are at risk for that disease. This was a, a, a large trial with 17,000 uh, patients. We had about 10,000 patients who uh, were, we would consider primary prevention, those who didn't already have cardiovascular disease, and about 7,000 patients uh, who were secondary prevention who already did have cardiovascular disease. And they were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to either dapagliflozin or placebo. Uh, and then these patients were followed forward uh, for about four and a half years. Uh, and our major outcomes were cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure, and then also uh, what we called MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events, which is the combination of uh, cardiovascular death, MI, and stroke. And what we observed uh, was that there was a significant reduction uh, in the first of the primary events, the cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure. Uh, that was reduced by about 17 percent. Uh, this was uh, driven mostly by reductions in hospitalization for heart failure, which were lower by about 27 percent, so quite a, a large uh, reduction in that. Uh, for the MACE outcomes, uh, we saw no uh, statistical difference. Numerically, they were a bit lower, uh, but did not meet the statistical threshold. Uh, other interesting findings uh, from the study uh, were that, uh, the re that renal outcomes were indeed uh, improved as well so that we saw um, a, uh, t about a 24% reduction in progression of, of renal disease. So uh, overall, from an efficacy standpoint, it seemed that the benefit was mostly related to uh, heart failure and renal dysfunction. Uh, from a safety standpoint, uh, there had been some concerns raised about this class of drugs from some other trials, uh, possibly increases in the risk of stroke or increases in the risk of amputation. Uh, we did not see uh, any of those uh, in this trial, so that, that was quite reassuring. Uh, there are some known side effects of uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, notably, they in increase the rate of uh, genital infections uh, and also, uh, although infrequently, uh, can increase the rate of diabetic ketoacidosis. So some things to be aware of. Uh, and those, uh, those findings were also observed in our study as expected. That, um, when we take uh, this trial in context with, with the other trials uh, of drugs in this class, uh, what started to emerge is a fairly consistent uh, uh, theme, which is that uh, patients with diabetes who are at risk for, particularly for heart failure, um, seem to benefit uh, for, from these agents. And so, you know, I think this is actually extends uh, beyond uh, the cardiologist to patients, uh, to physicians who are taking care of patients with diabetes, whether that be endocrinologists or more commonly primary care physicians. But, but from a cardiology standpoint, uh, the benefits that we're seeing uh, with this class of drugs in our, in our patients with diabetes uh, in terms of heart failure reductions are, are similar to drugs that we use all the time, drugs like ACE inhibitors, drugs like beta blockers. In some cases, the magnitudes of the benefits are, are larger. So I think as a cardiology community, uh, we need to think about the fact that, um, that these drugs, in some senses, are cardiovascular prevention drugs as much as they are uh, blood sugar lowering drugs. Uh, and I think the cardiologist needs to become familiar uh, with these medications, how they're dosed, how they're used, uh, and, um, and, and how best to serve our patients by, uh, by considering these therapies the take-home message uh, from the past couple of years, not just from this trial, but this trial fits in nicely, um, is that when we think about our diabetic patients, uh, we really need to be thinking about not just how much we lower blood sugar, not aiming for specific targets necessarily as the only uh, role of our therapy, but thinking about how we lower the blood sugar. So, you know, like we do with other uh, cardiovascular therapies, following the evidence basis uh, in choosing the therapies that, uh, that are proven to, to improve important outcomes for our patients.